Welcome to the second part of this video series. In this part, I will show you how you can implement a simple gen for digit generation in TensorFlow. We are going to use a few libraries, so I did a few imports first. We need TensorFlow and Keras for the machine learning part. And we are going to use NumPy and Matplotlib. We are going to use the MNIST dataset, which is a dataset of handwritten digits. And this dataset already comes with TensorFlow, so we can just use it with this line. We don't need the labels right now, that's why I put the underscores here. And we only need the xtrain and the xtest. To see how the data looks, we can just draw the first image in the dataset. And we can see we have a 5, it's a 28 by 28 pixel array. and this may look colored, but it's actually just one channel. It's only black and white, um, but Matplotlib draws it like it has color. Um, don't get confused by that. And we can just close that and move on. Now, first we should convert these arrays to float arrays because these are integers. So the pixel values in this array go from zero to 255. So we need to scale them down to a range from zero to one. Let's also, print the Let's also print the shape of the arrays to see how many samples we have. And you can see there are 60,000 samples in the training array and 10,000 samples in the test array. Now we can start building our model and for that I will be using the functional API from Keras. First we will build a discriminator and I will abbreviate discriminator with dis and generator with gen. The first layer is just an input layer. With that layer, the input array of 28 by 28 gets cast into a tensor of size 28 by 28 by one. We have this last channel with size one because we are going to use a convolutional network and convolutional networks work with um, channels. So we need to define that our image has only one channel. If you would have colored images, you would actually have three channels for red, green, and blue. Um, but for this case, we only have one channel. Also, if you want to experiment with fully connected neural networks instead of convolutional networks, you would need to convert the image into a vector of size 784. And then you could feed this vector into a fully connected neural network. So the first layer is a conf layer with 16 filters, filter size three and stride two. So the filter always takes steps of size two and we are going to use the activation 10H. The padding for this layer is same. You can see the differences in padding types right here, full padding, same padding and valid padding. In this video, I will only be using same and valid paddings. The differences in paddings are where the filter starts and where it ends. You can see the filter for same padding starts right here and for valid padding starts totally inside the image. So it will also result in different sizes of the output image. I'm just gonna add a few other layers. Then we are gonna flatten these layers. In the end, we have a dense layer with 128 neurons and a last dense layer with one output and the sigmoid activation because we want to output probabilities between zero and one. We want to output a probability for how likely it is that the image is real. And with the functional API, you just need to say what is the input of the model and what is the output of the model. And with model.summary, we can print the structure of the model. So let's do that. And we can see that we have 600,000 parameters and you can also see all the layers right here. Then we need to compile the model. We are gonna use the SGD loss and the learning rate I haven't defined yet. So let's do that. I found that 0 0.005 works quite well, but you can try other values and see how that works for you. Let's also already define the learning rate for the generator. And we also use the binary cross entropy loss 
this is just the log loss, which leads to the model actually outputting probabilities. So you won't get that with mean square error or mean absolute error. But uh, with this loss, the model tends to output probabilities for uh, how likely it is that the image uh, is actually real or fake. Also, we are going to use the metric accuracy to get a feeling for how well our model works. And now we can define our generator model. Our generator model takes a seed as an input. So um, let's define a variable for that. So we have a seed size. And let's put that to 20. The seed size shouldn't be too small. Otherwise, you might get something called mode collapse, where the model only will output the same images. So for example, the model would always output a 1 or a 3 or a 7. But with a bit higher seed values, we can get more diverse outputs. We then have a dense layer with 128 neurons and activation 10H and a reshape layer because we need to get an image out of this model. So we need to reshape the current neurons into an image shape. So I chose eight by eight by two channels. That's a very arbitrary choice by me. You can try any other values, but just make sure that this times this times this is equal to this, um, otherwise it won't work. And then I add two conf layers and an upsampling 2D layer because the image needs to get bigger. We need to get an output of 28 by 28. For the rest of the model, I use a few more conf layers and one more upsampling layer. In the end, I use padding valid. I do that just to get the right size. You can see that if I print the summary of the model, so let's first define the model and let's just run this code. You can see that the output is 28 by 28. Um, if you don't get to 28 by 28 because um, for whatever reason, you could also use another layer, a lambda layer to just say, okay, this is the batch dimension. Let's take the whole batch and take the tw first 20 rows and first 20 columns of the batch and just print that out. So this would be useful if we want to get an output image size 20 by 20 and not 28 by 28. But we don't need that, so we can throw that away. Now we need to define a combined model. We can't actually compile the generator model because we don't have labels for the generator model. So we need to train a combined model. So the combined model will include the generator and the discriminator model. Now, if we train the combined model with gradient descent and the goal of maximizing the output, this will only train the generator as we will freeze the weights of the discriminator. When we want to build a combined model, we just need to concatenate the generator and the discriminator. To do that, we first need to freeze the weights for the discriminator um, for the new combined model. We can do that with the following line. Now the discriminator's weights are frozen, but only for the upcoming model and not for the already compiled discriminator model. So if we would recompile the discriminator model, the discriminator model wouldn't be trainable anymore. But since we already compiled it, everything should be fine. COM stands for combined in this case. And when we define our combined model, we again have an input of seed size. Now the next layer is just the generator model applied to the COM input layer. And we also have a layer COM discriminator output, which is the discriminator model applied to the previous layer. And like that, we can again define the model with COM input and COM discriminator output. And now we compile it. I will use again SGD and binary cross entropy and metric accuracy. Now to actually train the model, we need to do a few things. Let's first define an array with all the indices we want to train with. And I want to keep track of some stats like loss and accuracy. So let's um, use these to keep track of over the past few epochs while training. Um, so we see what the current loss and the current accuracy is. We need this for plotting later because we want to plot some images. And now 
Let's define a variable for the amount of epochs we want to train with. Let's say 10 epochs first. And let's print every epoch, define a counter that starts at zero. And let us all shuffle all the indices before training each epoch. We do that just in case um, there's some order in the data set. So we need to so we don't need to train the model with single images, so we can use batches of a few images. Um, so let's define a variable called batch size. I found that batch size of 16 works or even 32. Um, from experience, I would say that the batch size shouldn't get too big, but um, I guess that's just different for every problem. Um, I would just stick to 16 in this video. Again, you can try other values as well. Now we go through all the indices with step size of batch size. We increase the counter by one, and then we define how many samples we want to take. In almost every case, it will be the same as batch size, but if we are in the last few samples of the dataset, it might happen that there are not enough samples left. So I will define a variable called take n, which um, defines how many samples we want to train with. And batch indices is just all the indices in the batch we want to train with. Now we need to generate a batch of seeds because the generator takes seeds as input. And we just generate the generated images by the generator with genmodel.predict. Also, let's just evaluate the combined model or the generator and the discriminator model. Note that the performance of the combined model represents the performance of the generator model because we only use the generator model in the combined model. So now we just accumulate the accuracy and the log loss into these variables so we can print them later and uh, see how, how well we did over the past few epochs. Now with train on batch, you can input one batch you want to train with. So we take the indices we want to train with and tell the discriminator model that all of these images are real. Then we show the discriminator model or the generated images and tell the discriminator model these should be fake or zero. And then we tell the generator that for the input seed, the output of the discriminator should be one because now if we input a seed into the combined model, it will actually go through the generator model and then through the discriminator model. But this step will only train the generator as we've set the trainable for the discriminator model to false. So now let's output a few things every 20th epoch. So here we output the log loss and the accuracy and also reset these values after every 20th epoch. So for the next time we print them, these are still relevant. And then we can draw a few images. So with this, we can draw 16 images in a four by four subplot. I would just use the generator images from the generator um, that we also use for training and also set the counter to zero in the end again. Note that a few things here are a bit redundant as we evaluate on the seed and we also train on the seed. So theoretically we do these, um, we do the forward pass multiple times during one step. Um, this is just for showcasing how the GAN works. And this is probably not the most optimal way to design again in TensorFlow. All right, so now I can show you how the GAN will generate images and gets better over time. And I will speed up the progress a bit because this can take quite a while. In the beginning, the generations are not that good, but after a while you can see how some digits are really looking realistic and they get really hard to differentiate from real images. In the console, you can also see the loss and the accuracy of the generator and the discriminator. Accuracy for the generator in this case means how often it can trick the discriminator. So just because the values don't change much over the course of the training, doesn't mean that the nets don't learn. It just means that they are both learning at a similar rate. But right now we can't tell the model what to generate. We can just tell it that it should generate any kind of digit. So in the next video, I will cover conditional GANs, 
With conditional GANs, you can tell the model that it should generate, for example, a 2 or a 5, and it tries to generate that exact digit. For that to work, we just need to do a few adjustments to our current code. Also, you can find all the code for this series in my GitHub repository, which I will link to in the description. I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you next time.